Coming up on an all new list. Oh my gosh, that is magical. Take the garden to table concept into your kitchen. I want that spice and that flavor to linger in my mouth. Plus the best apps to edit your photos. They're really intuitive to like the average person that doesn't know much. But first, learn to manage your emotions with science. You can then reframe some of those thoughts. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Rhodes. When we're feeling happy, excited, and optimistic, it's great. But when the emotions dominating our thoughts are negative, it can be really grim, especially when all that darkness seems random. Jackie Denker looks at how our brains control our emotions and how to handle that gray matter so we can stay cool, calm, and collected. That's our featured story at the top of the list. Emotions, they can really take over sometimes, which can be a little overwhelming, but... They are so, so, so important for us to be able to cope and adapt and learn and understand things in our environment. So to learn the brain science behind these emotions and how to successfully manage them, we turned to pediatric neuropsychologist, Dr. Sarah Levin-Allen. Let's start by breaking down emotions and why they are important. Emotions are designed to help you figure out what to go towards and what to go away from. So things like fear are really important because that tells us that we need to be away from that thing, that we don't want to go near it. Emotions like happiness or excitement, on the other hand. That's going to give us a boost of a chemical named dopamine to the front of our brain. and It's going to make us feel good and want to go towards that or do that again. Now let's get a little lesson on our brains to understand our emotions even better. So I like to personify parts of the brain. So Amy G is the amygdala of our brain. She's the emotion center of our brain and she's responsible for feeling in general, very, uh, very loud and very openly. Then we have Franny, who is the frontal lobe of our brain. And Franny is responsible for any regulation and control over our brain, specifically in this topic to emotions. Dr. Sarah says there's always a balance between Amy G and Franny. I picture Amy G like a puffer fish. She puffs up and gets very angry at any little thing. And that's where Franny comes in. She needs to calm Amy G down. So with that in mind, when emotions arise, it's okay to feel them, but we need to learn to control them. To do this, we need insight into why we are feeling the way we are. If we understand why we feel something and we know our triggers, we're going to be able to let Franny know and then Franny can help to regulate Amy G. And it can take a bit of work to get to know our triggers. You can use therapy for this. You can use talking to a friend or a partner about these emotions that you're feeling. The more you practice recognizing what causes our flare-ups, that's going to help you improve that response down the road. Finally, once we can identify our triggers, we can reframe our thoughts. Which is changing your thought patterns to be thinking in a different way, which is then going to calm down your Amy G. For example, if you have insight in knowing that you get angry when someone cuts you off on the road. You can then reframe some of those thoughts and realize if I'm a few minutes late, better to be late than to get into an accident. So I'm gonna slow down here and I'm gonna calm my Amy G so that I can get to the location safely versus on time. Learning about our brains so we can rein in our emotions is at the top of the list. The farm to table movement has exploded in popularity in recent years. And now freshness loving foodies are going one better. Christina's checking out the trend where your produce is grown like right outside your door where you can pick it and carry it inside. Farm to Table is a social movement of bringing local food to local restaurants. But a new trend has restaurants planting gardens just steps away from the kitchen. I have a very simple philosophy. Just eat what you like, cook what you like, grow what you like. It's that simple. Chef Angelo Sosa, co-founder of Tia Carmen in Scottsdale, Arizona, shows how you can create the ultimate fresh meals by using your own garden starting with a tomato and corn puree salad. The inspiration here was to tell the story not only of these voluptuous tomatoes and beautiful tomatoes, but grilled corn. To make the corn puree, what we do is take some butter, sweat the butter, add the corn in there, and we add a little salt, and that's it. That's it. And we let it cook for probably 10 to 15 minutes, and then we take that and just put that into a blender. Char the corn husks and grind them into a dust. Very beautiful, but also very simple. Cut the heirloom tomato into big slices and season it with salt and pepper. 
Then place arbol chilies and sliced serranos on top. This is pickled red onion liquid. Pour this mixture over the tomatoes, break up some fresh thyme, and sprinkle it on top. Now we're going to start plating. Put a dollop of corn puree onto the plate and drag the spoon over it. Then pile the tomatoes on top. Garnish it with crystal lettuce and dust it with the burnt corn husk. Mm. Gosh, it's so good. It's sweet, it's sour, I love it. Next, try tip kebab tacos. I want that spice and that flavor to linger in my mouth and almost like seduce me. How do you marinate it? You're gonna take that Southwestern spice mix, you're gonna season that. Add salt, soy sauce, and olive oil and marinate for an hour at room temp. Then grill it up for about four minutes on each side. We have Thai basil, the epazote, which I adore, the serrano chilies. Use perilla leaves as your taco tortilla, then garnish it with the basil, epazote, serrano, and pickled onions. Then place a kebab on it. Are you kidding me? Our final dish, seasoned trout. We have beautiful parsley from the garden, oregano, and some garlic. That's how simple this dish is. Blend the herbs and garlic with some olive oil and salt to make the parsley pesto. Season the trout with a spice rub and grill it for eight minutes on each side. And we literally brush the trout, finish the trout with brushing it with that beautiful pesto. I want to get the perfect bite yeah, for you. Yeah, please, get the perfect bite. Oh my gosh, that is magical. That is magical. For the full recipes, head to thelisttv.com. Making our taste buds dance with garden to table dishes. Anyone with a smartphone is a photographer these days. Problem is, sometimes the touch-ups we need to do on those pics are a little out of the comfort zone for regular old apps. The good news is there are options that are tech savvy and economical too. So Hattie D. Jamal is looking at web-based photo editing. Nearly all of us are smartphone shutterbugs, but editing and adjusting our photos can be a chore. Thankfully, there are free and low-cost websites that can do almost any editing task we might need. They're really intuitive to like the average person. Professional photographer Luke Menando shows us three of his favorites, starting with the totally free Quick Tools by Pixart photo editing site. Quick Tools make simple, quick adjustments, like removing the background from a photo. So if I want to put out a poster or something about having senior photos, then I can use that to kind of take out the background of whatever I need and then paste it onto my poster. It's very simple. You upload your photo and voila! Background is gone, something that can take a long time in Photoshop. It's a lot easier than having to go through and click through each point and decide manually where you want to remove things. Check them out at tools.pixart.com. Next up is Fodor. This is feature packed and loaded with beauty tools much more powerful than many popular smartphone apps. There are apps on your phone that do do a lot of things that Fodor does do, but not at the level that Fodor can do it. There's a skin retouching feature and even artificial makeup like eyeliner, lipstick, and eyeshadow. This girl's getting a professional makeover without the price. There's more, like a profile maker. I took my photo from the first app, uploaded it, and selected the YouTube option and presto. I have a professional looking YouTube banner. They charge 40 bucks a year for full access. Find them at Fodor.com. We'll wrap up with Convertio, a file converter. While not as flashy as virtual makeup, it can be a lifesaver when uploading pics. File formats are important because certain websites don't take certain files. Apple's iPhone shoots in the HEIC format, which is fine for Apple, but Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook prefer JPEGs. You simply upload a picture in any format, click on JPEG, convert, and that's it. It's the most universal and it's pretty much compatible with everything. Check them out at convertio.co. Editing pics like a pro with web-based apps. Here's what's next on the list. Who was Gustav Klimt? New art, new painting, new music. And Gustav Klimt was the head of all of it. And get a full dose of cuteness with these TikTok cats. Let me see that handsome face. Plus. Bend their knees. <laughs> Yeah! Remember to bend? Oh! <laughs> Why roller skates are back in style. That's one of the benefits of roller skating. All that and more next. Hey YouTube, I know, I know it's rude to interrupt, but this is going to be so worth it. I just wanted to remind you to hit subscribe and turn on notifications. The payoff? You'll never miss the list. Okay, now back to the show. Welcome back. 
Gustav Klimt's art has recently come back into the public eye after being featured in one of those immersive traveling shows. But the fact is, he's been having an impact on our culture for 130 years. We're taking a glimpse into the life and work of this groundbreaking artistic legend. Austrian artist Gustav Klimt was what you'd call a true renaissance man, minus the inflated ego. He was just this great free-spirited man. He also never painted any pictures of himself. He said, you want to know about me? Look at my paintings. Art expert Richard Ozunian of Lighthouse Immersive gives us a history lesson on what made Gustav Klimt so unique. First up, he led a cultural revolution. In Vienna, at the turn of the 20th century, it meant a time when all the old ideas were being swept out and the new ones in. New art, new painting, new music, even new ways of treating people. Sigmund Freud started doing psychoanalysis at that point, and Gustav Klimt was the head of all of it. Some of Klimt's work was a tad risque for the times and was censored. The faculty paintings, as they're known, were never publicly displayed. All that remains are these drawings. The originals were lost to fire in World War II. Next. Klimt portrayed women not only as beautiful, but as confident and strong. Look at any portrait of Klimt's women. The women are looking you right in the eye. He's engaging with them as human beings, one-on-one. -on -one. They're looking at you and saying, hello, Gustav Klimt, hello, viewer of this painting, here's who I am. And he not only dated the women he painted, he fathered many of their children. Klimt was a very sensual man. He never married, but he had 14 children. <laughs> And the best part is everybody loved him. All of his ex-girlfriends would pose for pictures for him or stay in touch with him. We'll close out with a pair of Klimt's gold period paintings that smashed sales records generations apart. His most famous work, The Kiss, was purchased by the Austrian government for 25,000 crowns back in 1908, about 250 grand in today's money, a Viennese record. 63 million. Fast forward to 2006, and his final painting from the same series, known as The Lady in Gold, sold for a record-breaking $135 million at Christie's. But you don't need to be an art expert or travel to Vienna to enjoy Klimt's work. It's available in a traveling show, Immersive Klimt Revolution. Check out Immersive Klimt.com for more info. Celebrating an art revolutionary with the life of Gustav Klimt. With over 187 billion views, hashtag cat is clearly a big deal on TikTok. Teresa Strasser is here to share a few cat fluencers you might want to follow for your daily dose of cute. Hey, Teresa. Thank you. With nearly 133 million likes combined, these cats are some of TikTok's biggest stars. Coming in at number one, Liam and Momo. Day three of trying to get Liam to use the exercise wheel. For those who don't know, this is Liam. He's an asthmatic cat that needs to lose some weight. Liam uses an inhaler. Momo just loves to lounge around. The chicken, legs tucked under, double legs out for extra class. Sometimes they play fight. Hey, come here, look, come here. And try cat products. Liam and Momo shed so much, so we're gonna go ahead and leave this in the playroom and see how much hair we can clip. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's pause now for a brief moment to appreciate the internet, even though it mostly gives us FOMO and shrinks our attention span. <sighs> okay, at number two, Stephen Katz. This cat takes us on adventures <laughs> by giving us a first-person POV as he explores the great outdoors. <laughs> he also takes us to his parents' office. His home's courtyard. and sometimes his encounters with other pets. It is okay, that sparring match did end in a truce. And third on our TikTok cat stars list, Ivar the blind cat. Ivar doesn't steal souls, people. Unless you're looking directly in his eyes, then yes, he's stealing your soul. He also has a brother named Toad, who has a condition that makes him look like a kangaroo. He has a disability called radial hypoplasia. So basically, Ivar is known for making goofy faces. Let me see that handsome face. Oh my. Okay. 
You are handsome, though. And Toad is known for always sticking the landing. <laughs> and those were a few TikTok felines who have millions of fans. Lots more to come on the list. Stay with us. We're back. From the success of Squid Game on Netflix to the majority Asian cast in Crazy Rich Asians, representation is becoming more of a reality in Hollywood. Christina's taken a closer look at some of the South Asian actors making their mark on the hot list. The last 10 years has seen a wave of South Asian stars light up high-profile Hollywood films and TV shows in a way never seen before. I get very excited when I see the shift happening in the entertainment industry and you're seeing more and more really, really great South Asian talent. Talking about some of the actors smashing open doors to make Hollywood more exciting and diverse is documentary filmmaker and podcaster Gia Wirtz. Starting off with Riz Ahmed. He's a really great role model for South Asians. Yes, I'm Pakistani. Yes, I'm Muslim. But that's not all I am. I guess he's very selective with the roles he takes, and he's very aware of not giving in to stereotypes, which I think really moves the needle forward in the way that we want to see it. Understandable. I'd say understandable. Riz won critical acclaim for his performance in the Oscar-winning movie Sound of Metal, which is available on Amazon Prime. Up. And he made history when he became the first Asian to win a lead acting Emmy for the HBO miniseries The Night Of. Thank you for what you did for me. And the entire miniseries is about the ordeal that he goes through trying to figure out what actually happened that night. Up next, Frida Pinto. Such a great actress. Frida made her debut in the 2008 Oscar winning movie Slumdog Millionaire. I thought Frida can only in debt. Slumdog Millionaire was just also such a fantastic film. You can catch the latest performance of this SAG Award winner in Mr. Malcolm's List, playing in theaters now. I am greatly honored by your offer, but I cannot accept. And finally, Kumail Nanjiani. First introduction to Kumail Nanjiani was on The Big Sick. This highest grossing independent film of 2017 was chosen by American Film Institute as one of the top 10 films of the year and was also nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. Are you judging Pakistan's next top model? You know how we have arranged marriage in my culture? Not only is it based on his real life love story with his wife, Emily, he starred in it, but along with his wife, he also wrote this charming film. Since then, Kumail has scored some major roles in movies like Marvel's Eternals and the current hit Disney Plus miniseries Obi-Wan Kenobi. I am Haja Estri, Jedi. He is everywhere. Actors leading the way and carving a path for future generations on The Hot List. We'll be right back. We're back. And guess what sport is breathing new life into nostalgia lovers, fitness regimens. It's roller skating, it's back big time, so Jackie Denker is lacing them up and checking out the 70s craze that combines cardio with cool moves. In a simpler time, before hoverboards and e-bikes, people got around on roller skates and looked super cool doing it. Well. It's back. There has definitely been kind of a resurgence, if you will. So to learn a bit about skating, we went to USA's Skateland in Chandler, Arizona, where we got the down low from national roller skating champion and founder of Arizona Roller Entertainment, Taylor Ovens. First up, what to wear while you're on wheels. That's one of the benefits of roller skating. Literally anything that you want to skate in, anything that you're comfortable in. Of course, I'd be a little cautious about wearing a dress right. or something like right. that. Because we yeah. want to put on a show, not that kind of show. Right. Right. <laughs> and as for protective wear. That's really open to you. I don't use any, but that's your own prerogative. I can hardly walk a straight line. <laughs> so I went for the pads, because Taylor says, be prepared. You're going to have those accidents, <laughs> but I really hope that people don't get discouraged because of that. Next, we're learning about the different styles of roller skating. As you travel to certain areas in the country, the music will change, the moves will change. But she says all styles are based on a few core moves. There are eight edges, right? You have two feet and there's 
four edges for each. And then you have four flats. You can go forward on your left, backwards on your left, forward on your right, backwards on your right. So you've got those four flats and you have eight edges. Anything that you see, they always have a commonality and it is those 12 steps, but it's what they do with them that makes them so different and so unique. Finally, she showed us a couple of moves. So we're gonna jump into what are called bubbles. Which she says can help you work on your balance, control, and speed. Shoulder width apart, you push your toes apart and then you pull your toes together, keeping those knees bent. Push them out. Ooh. Good job, bend their knees, bend them. <laughs> yes. Next, she is breaking down a super popular move, a two foot spin. So we're gonna go on our left toe wheels. Now there's a sweet spot in your skate between your toe stop being down and your wheels being down. And once you get that down, she says it's important to remember. We never use our arms for momentum, okay? It comes from the core, it comes from your hips, your knees, and your feet. One, two, three, bend, remember to bend. Yes, that was so good. Now go out and let the good times roll with Roller Skating 101. Now, Jackie makes it look easy, but I'd need like three layers of bubble wrap to do that. YouTube, you're looking great today. Lost weight? New algorithm? Anyway, thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video, leave us a comment down below, and subscribe so you never miss a list. And I've hand-selected more episodes that pair well with what you're drinking there. Bon appetit.